when we looked at the different types of numbers, we started with the natural numbers, moved to the integers, then to the rationals, which are expressed as p by q. And then we argued that the rationals do not exhaust all the numbers that we need. And in particular, we claimed that the square root of 2 cannot be expressed as a rational number. So it is what is called an irrational number. So let's try and ask why square root of 2 is an irrational number. So the discovery of irrational numbers actually is attributed to the ancient Greeks. And in particular, it comes from Pythagoras. So remember that in Pythagoras' theorem, which you must have studied in school, if you have a right angle triangle, then the square on the hypotenuse, that is the square on the long diagonal side, this one, has an area which is, which is the sum of the squares on the other side. So in other words, if you have a right angle triangle and you measure the three sides, you get a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So from this, knowing a and b, you can compute c. So in particular, if you draw a square which has 1 and 1 as its two sides, then this must be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 2. So you can actually physically draw, if you assume that you can measure out a unit length using some kind of a measure, then by drawing a square, you can actually construct a length square root of 2. So for Pythagoras, it was very important to understand how to describe the square root of 2 as a rational number. And he and his followers spent many, time, many years trying to prove that in fact it could be expressed as a rational number. Much after Pythagoras, about 50, 60 years after Pythagoras, one of his followers, Hippasus, is claimed to have proved that square root of 2 is irrational. This was around 500 BCE. Now, the followers of Pythagoras had a very mystical idea about numbers and they felt that numbers could solve everything and in particular, they were very keen that ration, rational numbers should form the basis of all of what we could call in modern day time science and philosophy. So the followers of Pythagoras were really shocked by this discovery of Hippasus. They found it to be a, I mean, they could not argue with it. At the same time, they felt that this discovery could not be revealed to the public because they felt it was very dangerous. So in fact, it is said that they allegedly drowned him in the sea to prevent this from being made public. So the square root of 2 being irrational has a rather colorful history. And let us see now how Hippasus proved that this was actually the case. So let's assume as in many of our arguments, let's assume that square root of 2 is rational. So if it is rational, then we know that it can be written as a ratio or fraction of two integers p and q. And in particular, we can assume that it is in reduced form. So p and q have no common divisor, their GCD is 1. So if we take square root of 2 is equal to p by q and we square both sides, then square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 on the left hand side and p, q, p by q times p by q is p squared by q squared. So we get 2 is equal to p squared by q squared. So we can cross multiply as usual, take the q squared from the denominator on the right hand side to the left hand side numerator and we get 2q squared is equal to p squared. So what is p squared? p squared is p times p. And if it is of the form 2 times something, then it is an even number because an even number is something which has 2 as a factor. So p squared has 2 as a factor. So p squared is an even number. Now it's a basic fact about natural numbers that if you multiply two odd numbers, you get an odd number. And if you multiply two even numbers, you get an even number. So if p squared is even and p squared is p times p, then both p and p, the two copies must both be even. So p must be an even number in other words. So if p is an even number, then we can write p as two times something because p is even, p must be of the form two times something, say two a. Right? So from this initial assumption, we have concluded that the numerator of this fraction which represents square root of 2 is actually an even number of the form 2a. So now let's substitute in this equation for p squared. Right? So p squared is 2a the whole squared. 2a the whole squared is 4, 2 times 2, 4 times a squared. So now 4a squared is equal to 2q squared. So now we can cancel. right? So we can take this 2 and this 2 and cancel it. So we have, in other words, that q squared is 2a squared. And if q squared is 2a squared, then by the same argument as before, q squared is also even. And so q must be even. And therefore, q can be written as the form of 2 times some other number b. So we have that p is of the form 2 times a and q is of the form 2 times b. But what this means is that the GCD of p and q must be at least 2 because both of them are even numbers. So they are both multiples of 2. So we claimed initially that the GCD of p and q is 1. We said that they were actually both 
in reduced form, so there was no common factor other than 1. And now we have shown that if we assume that, we in fact generate 2 as a common factor, so this cannot be the case. So the only contradiction that we can res resolve with this is by assuming that p by q could not have been there, so therefore square root of 2 cannot be represented by any reduced fraction p by q. So this argument of hypasis is a common way of arguing things in mathematics. Right? To show that some fact capital P holds, you first assume that not P holds, its negation holds. So we wanted to show that there is no way that square root of 2 cannot be expressed as rational. So we said, okay, let us assume the nega negation, let us assume that square root of 2 can in fact be expressed as rational and then you take that assumption and derive a contradiction and since you cannot accept a contradiction, your assumption must be wrong and therefore what you tried to prove originally was correct. So in fact, it is not just square root of 2 that is irrational, square root of 3 is also irrational. Now 4 is a perfect square, so we know that square root of 4 is 2, what about square root of 5, that is also irrational. So among the integers, among the natural numbers, we have the perfect squares 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 and so on, which consists of 2 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared and so on. So a perfect square is one whose square root is also a natural number. Now it turns out that anything which is not a perfect square has an irrational square root and the proof is not exactly the same because we have used the property of 2 and evenness in this proof, but with a very similar argument you can show this is the case. So therefore, there are a lot of irrational numbers that you can generate just by taking square roots of non-perfect squares.